Good morning, everyone. This is Mrs. Slauson, and we are in week 15 of being fully remote. So the things I'm going to suggest you have, and these things were available to you in a week 13 or a week 14 folder. Um, I believe it was week 13. There is a factor sheet, and on the other side is a multiplication table. So this is a tool that I think is really handy to have. And then you should also have, if you have access to a printer, printed up week 15 assignment one. So one thing to clarify is I did a little bit of writing on my factor sheet and I did this to help you go through how you will now factor completely. So at this point here on out, we will always be looking to factor completely. And the first thing you're gonna to need to do is make sure that your problem when you're being asked to factor or factor completely is in standard form. So that means you're going to have your highest exponent first, then your next highest, then your next highest, until you work your way down to the constant. And if you remember, a constant is just a number without a variable. The other thing you want to do to make factoring easy is to make sure your leading term, the very first one in standard form, is positive. If it's not, then that's going to do something very specific for the greatest common factor. But once you check it's in standard form and you know that your leading term needs to be a positive, the first thing you're going to do to the problem is try to factor out a greatest common factor. So you're looking for the biggest number that will distribute, or I'm sorry, factor out of each term. And then you're also looking for your variables. So for most of the problems, it will be x, but you know sometimes it's going to be a di different letter. So how many x's could you take out? After you're done with the greatest common factor, you're going to have stuff or terms in parentheses. If there are three terms in your parentheses, then what we're gonna to wanna to do to factor completely is see if we can make an X, and if we can make an X, we're gonna factor it all the way. If there's two terms in your parentheses, then what you're gonna do is make a difference of squares. And so remember, that gets its name because there's subtraction difference, and squares, because each term, there's only the two terms, have a perfect, are a perfect square, which means they have a nice square root. And your perfect squares, are all in this diagonal on the multiplication table, okay? So with that, maybe pause and get this written down, add it to your factor sheet. And otherwise, we're gonna get started on week 15, assignment one. So when we did this as a class, um, hold on one second. As when we did this as a class, well, we sorry. Blah, 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 blah. We did the first six as a class, and then the idea is that you do the next four. So that's how it's going to go here. Is you're going to do the first six, and then I will have the answers for you to check the last four. But let's walk through the first six. So first thing I notice is this problem is in standard form. I got a third, then a second, and then just the x. And from there, what I can do is I notice that my leading term is not positive. So when I do my GCF first, which is what this says to do, not only will I be factoring a 3 out, but I'll want to turn this into a positive term. So I'm going to actually factor a negative 3 out. And then when I notice this has 3x's, 2x, and 1x, that I can take 1x from each term. So I'm going to do that. And now I'm going to ask myself, negative 3 times what makes negative 3? And that's just a 1. And if there were 3x's and I just took 1 away, now I have 2x's left. And then negative 3 times what makes a positive 24, that's a negative 8. And if one of the x's got taken away, I have one left. And then negative 3 times what makes negative 45, that would be a positive 15. And I took this one's x, so it won't have anything in there. So now what you need to look at is what specifically in the parentheses, how many terms do you have? Do you have two terms or three terms? And here we have three terms. So this is what I'm going to use to factor on now. So the next thing I'm going to do, if it helps and if I can find something here, is when we do factor here on out, I'm only worrying about the stuff that's in parentheses. And so what I'm going to do, and I'm looking around trying to find my, my post-it notes, but I don't see any, is we're going to use this, is I'm just going to cover up this GCF, because right now this has nothing to do with what I'm trying to do now. I'm just trying to factor this. So with three terms, I'm going to make my x. I multiply those for 15x squared. I put my middle term in the bottom. And then I can look at all my factors of 15. So I get 1 and 15, 3 and 5. And I want the set that gets me to 8, or in this case, negative 8. 
So 3 and 5 make positive 8, so negative 3 and negative 5 would have to make a negative 8. So from there, since my x worked, I'm going to make my x's, or parentheses, and put my x's on the left automatically because this term and this term, when multiplied, or as my students know it, as when this neighbor meets this neighbor, we get the x squared. So now I just want the numbers that make 1, and that would be 1 times 1. So from there, we're going to draw our face. We're going to draw the top of the head and the smile. Okay, and we're working for these numbers. These numbers are done. We only needed those to get the side numbers. So 1 can get both of these. So I'm just going to let this 1x make the negative 3x. So 1 times, and since it's a negative number, I definitely need a negative number. It would be 3. So that takes care of that one. And then I'll let this one make the negative 5. So 1 times negative 5 is the <clears throat> negative 5x. So this has been factored into these two, two terms, but what you want to remember is that we had another factor called the greatest common factor, and I just want to drop that down into my other two factors because all three factors are what are needed. So when these all multiply, or as I call it, when all these neighbors meet, you get back to this. You can't leave any of the factors out. All right, let's go to the next one. So here, uh, standard form. This is positive, so it's great. That's great. Uh, now I'm going to take a 3 out of all of my coefficients, and I'm going to take two x's from each term. So working this back in, 3 times what makes the 3? And since there were four x's and I took two away, there's now two left. 3 times positive 2 makes 6, and this one has one x left. And 3 times 2 makes this, and I took all of its x's away. So from there, what I want to do is just ignore this and focus on what's in the parentheses. And since there are three terms, according to my little cheat sheet, I should try the x. And if the x works, then I'll make my parentheses. All right, so multiplying these, and the 2x goes in the bottom. And so now I need factors of 2 that get to 2. So there's only two factors of 2. And as it turns out, um, these either both need to be positive to make positive 2, or they both need to be negative to make positive 2 up here. And if I make these both positive, I get 3, and if I make these both negative, I get negative 3. So as it turns out, I can't factor any more. It's not that I didn't factor it, but I can only do a little bit of factoring. So this is as far as the problem goes. I was able to factor a GCF out, but then I had to stop. So don't think just because you have all of this math that you have to do all parts to it. All right, let's go to number three. So first thing I do notice it is in standard form, but I also notice that my leading term is negative, so I will have to factor out a negative, and then I can take a two out of both numbers and an x from each term. So negative two times a positive three makes negative six with one x left, and negative two times a negative one makes the positive two, and this one has no x's left. So from there, looking in just the parentheses, ignoring this, I notice I have two terms. So what I'm going to see is, what happens with two terms, is is this a difference of squares? So I have the difference, that's good, but what I don't have are perfect squares. If I look at my diagonal on the other side here, I might see one, or I do see one, but I don't see three. Three is not a perfect square. It has a square root, but it's not a nice number. So just like on number two, this problem's done. All right, moving to number four. So first thing, standard form, and then I'm going to factor my GCF out. This is positive, so a three can go into all of those numbers, but no x's. So three times two is the six with the x squared. Three times negative five makes the negative 15 with the x. And three times negative 12 makes the 36. And if you need help with any of that multiplication, you could use a calculator, but you also have your multiplication table. So from there, not needing my GCF, I notice that in parentheses I have three terms, so I'm going to make my x. I'm going to multiply those for negative 24 on top, and negative 5 goes in the bottom. And when I look at my list of 24, I'm going to see that 8 and 3 work. So right now, 8 and 3 make 11, so I'll have to make one of these negatives. And if this is negative, that means there are more negatives and fewer positives. And these are the numbers I want. I don't really care about those anymore. And I'm still ignoring this, so making my parentheses now because the x worked. 
and this term and this term will make so far the x and the x make the x squared so now I just need the numbers that make 2 so it'll be 2 and 1 and now make my face and 2 is pickier than 1. 1 can make both of these but 2 can only make the 8 so following this loop 2 times 8 negative 4 makes the negative 8 and 1 times a positive 3 makes that 3. And so now I'll hopefully remember to bring my GCF back down, and this one's done. All right, two more. So first thing I'm going to look for is a GCF, or it is in standard form, sorry. Um, and it, my leading term is positive, so I just need to go for a GCF, and that is going to be a 3 and an X. And then 3 times 4 makes 12 with two X's left, and 3 times negative 9 makes negative 27 with no x's left. Not needing my GCF right now, so I'm going to put these in parentheses. And since there's two terms, I'm going to check to see if this is a difference of squares. So there's the difference. And then as it turns out, 4 and 9 are both in my diagonal. They both have nice square roots, 2 and 3. And x squared also has a square root, so this becomes 2x and 3. And from there, I can make my parentheses pretty fast and just put 2x plus 3 and 2x minus 3. And then when I move my eraser, I realize, oh, yep, I had a GCF and drop that in. Last problem. So this is in standard form. My leading term is positive, so I'm going to start with my GCF. And I can take a 6 out of both of those and an x. And then 6 times 2 is 12 with 1x left. And 6 times a negative 3 makes the negative 18 with no x's left. So again, just covering this up, I have two terms in the parentheses. There, so we'll see if it's a difference of squares. There's the difference, but 3 and 2 are not in the diagonal. They do have square roots, but they're not nice numbers. So that means this problem is done as far as factoring goes. Can't do anything else. So what you're going to do now is you should try these four problems on your own. When you look on your Schoology page, you will also see a place where you can check your answers. All right? And just a quick note, these are all in standard form, and all your leading terms are positive. So you have a pretty simple start. That's it.